Okay, I'm very happy to make this introduction. Um, actually, this next talk is also a result of your feedback. On some of the uh, feedback forms in Boston, it said, get one of the Italian ladies to make a presentation. And when I, <laughs> when I saw that, I knew exactly who to ask. Um, I think I met Elena uh, in 2008 for the first time. Um, there was a different entry of the Italian congregation that year. It's usually just a group of people shuffling in, but this time it was headed by one very determined person with a red barrette. <laughs> and I thought, ah, there's something here. So we talked. And then at the Viking Challenge, I found myself on the same team as Elena. And there are some people who, when they attack a problem, immediately decompose the problem and take all the steps from where you are to the solution. And I'm usually one of those, but I quickly realized I had competition in this group. And even to the extent that when we did the Sudoku, I have to back down, <laughs> because Yelena was there organizing the team doing stuff. So. Um, Elena is going to talk about how to disorganize this organization, and I think she's exactly the right person to do that. So I'll leave further introduction of herself to Elena Paviotti from Apalitiliana. Uh, hello. As uh, Gita said, is, um, she asked me to make this presentation because uh, it's true that a lot of us uh, from Apalitiliana always come to the conference but never give anything in return to the kind information you give to us. So I didn't have uh, the hair to tell her no. I just got there what you want me to speak about because uh, I'm not confident as a programmer, also if my job is to be a programmer. So she told me, organization? Okay, that I can do. <laughs> so I'm here and uh, it's my first presentation ever. So please, I know that you are kind people, but remember that for the next uh, 30 minutes. I'll try to speak uh, slow, uh, but since I'm uh, really nervous, then I can uh, start to speak uh, really fast. So stop me, they tell me to go slower, and uh, I'll try. So um, when my colleagues uh, discovered that I had plans to have a speech here. They asked me what I was going to discuss and uh, when I heard what the topic was, uh, so organizing this organization, they told me, organization? And since when do we have such a thing? <laughs> so probably you can think that uh, I'm not the right person, but uh, the funny part is that I think uh, they reacted like that because we have a good organization. At least that uh, you don't have to put your mind on organization all the time. You just have to work in the most comfortable way and everything else uh, follows. Not because there is magic, but uh, because uh, we are organized. So this is where I start. Let's hop to this. <laughs> okay. So... Let's start from the basic. What's being organized means? Because we have to agree with what is what we want to reach. In my opinion, being organized means that also if you have a lot of people with different rules in the company, you have a set of rules that those people have to follow to reach a common goal. Instead, having an organization means having people and proper tools to keep an eye on the whole process. In our case, uh, since we are a software house, their goal is to release a stable version of the software. Um, so if you're working alone in a, on your own project, uh, then you don't have to care about uh, the, all the people involved have to know what is going on. You are working alone, so you know what you are doing. And uh, you don't have uh, to worry about uh, release date because uh, you can release your software when it's ready. So you don't need an organization at all. And all you need to be organized is to make 
and follow a to-do list. If you are good and lucky and you grow to have a small company with a few people involved and a few customers, then you still probably don't need to care too much about the release date since your top priority is to make the customer happy as soon as possible. Since there will be not so many people involved, to keep everyone aligned, a chat during a coffee break will probably be enough to know what's going on and what everyone is doing. At this point, you still don't need an organization, and to keep being organized, a short list updated regularly by everyone will still work fine. What is difficult is to move to the next stage. If you have a lot of programmers working in different cities, a chat during the coffee break is not enough anymore. First of all, because you're not able to um, gather everyone in the coffee lounge anymore. This also means that you are not able to share with everyone the to-do list. So uh, you also will, um, you will not have few customers anymore. This means that uh, you probably will receive a lot of requests in different moments, probably continually, one day one thing, another day another thing. So you have to change your way to look at things because you can't start working on them as soon as you receive the request, as you probably did previously. In fact, if you behave like that and start working every time you receive a new request, your software will never be finished, nor um, surely you will not ever to be provide a stable version. So you have to start uh, to fix uh, the release dates, uh, and uh, you will uh, have to consider that your list of things to do will have priority and things that are not going to be released anytime soon. So you start needing an organization because uh, we can. You have to stop to just uh, work uh, uh, as you were used, but. Uh, he, with so many people, so many things to do, and so many customers waiting for what you promised them to give them, you cannot simply hope that things will go well. <laughs> so, also, you will notice that the shared list is not enough, so you need a proper tool to manage the things to do. What you have to consider at this stage is that also if you set up something that can work fine for organizational purpose, you probably will have to set some also for the programmers because at this point you, can't, you will have people working on the same function, on the same piece of code, but staying in different offices. So you need to keep track of who did what when, and uh, in my opinion, also why. Um, the source code management tools usually take care of when, and uh, if you're uh, what, obviously, but sometimes who, but difficult, usually doesn't manage the why. And uh, if you are wondering why is, why is important, if you are not, uh, you usually work alone, you know why you did the changes, and you can judge the changes done, the impact of them, if you know why, what was the, requ the initial request. If you have not the why, you know, you usually have to call the person that did the changes and ask, sorry, but why you did that? Because in my opinion, to reach that goal, I think you can do that. But if you do that this way, probably you had other means. So if you know the initial request, you can understand the change better and adapt what you are going to do to the request that can be you are not aware of because someone else did those things. The piece of code is the same, but for different reason, if it was modified by different person. So, the smart intuition they had in APL Italiana 
was to notice that what the company is supposed to do, so bugs that need to be fixed, uh, new customer requests that had to be developed, things uh, that would have been useful to do to improve the software, even if no one yet has asked for them, was also the list uh, of all the possible reasons a programmer could have to save code for. So, what we did, instead of creating a new tools just for organizational purpose, we added the why to our source code management system. The first step was to create a database of whys. So, everyone would have uh, so, sales department, you added customer request. Programmers and consultant under the residerata and the bugs, reports, and such other things. And so we created our list of why. All the company populated the database of whys. So everyone, if is interested, can have a complete, full understanding of what the company has to do. Then we linked it to our source code management tool, so it became uh, impossible uh, to save a piece of code without uh, selecting a why. The truth is that since uh, we are working with a program that has uh, a debugger inside, make things impossible is impossible for a programmer. So. What we, the way they choose is to make easier to use the new system than avoid it. And uh, relating to the fact that programmers are lazy people, the system was uh, easily adopted uh, when they noticed that fighting was uh, too much, of, uh, too, too stressing. So then we had something that have the list of things to do and uh, was really useful to decide what we have to, with, would be able or have to include in the next release, but um, was slightly, just slightly better than the shared to-do list. So we added more things to this database. One is priority, to know which, what is really important or what is just uh, a thought, huh, it could be useful sooner or later do that and add this as a, uh, as a desiderata or just, uh, just to don't forget about that. And uh, so when you work on that, you know, okay, this is a top priority for the company. This is just something we can do when we are free. That is something that never happens, but okay. Then we added the phase because uh, the company involves not just programmer, but also other people. So since we start for ca from customer request, the first uh, stage is analysis when the programmer is involved to just give an effort estimation, have an idea on what is going to happen, but stop there. Then we have to wait for customer approval because the effort estimation means money to spend, so it's not, so, it's not a given that they will say yes after your analysis. Then there is the actual phase of development in which programmers are involved. And when they are supposed to have finished, they put it in test phases so consultant can start to see if the understanding that there was with the customer is the same that the programmer actually developed because you have to consider that you can have different point of view on things and someone says, I want an import, then it means that he wants something that run an import on the schedule. So it can be different. And then uh, we added participants because uh, we have uh, something like 50 programmers and uh, 50 consultants. So not everyone is involved in every project. And so everyone has to know which are the project he's involved in and in which phase of the project he is involved, because we have a participant for every phase. So you can have a programmer that is a really old programmer, so it's really fast to give you an analysis, but you want some new programmer growth, your experience, so then you give this development to another team, so they will grow experience they're working on, what you already have an analysis, 
more or less a good one, and uh, they learn this way new things. So every phase has its own participants, and uh, you can decide, and you know, you can have a, a, a better management of every project this way. So the result of uh, all these improvement was that uh, at the end we decided that this database has to be the core of uh, our application, uh, of our management. So every time we add a new process to manage a new phase or something like that, we, have, uh, we added it to our database. So now we are able to manage not just our projects, but also the suppliers, check the development status, manage, as I say, the, the customer request, but also, and I, in case it's needed, manage documentation, news, and such things. Uh, the only problem is that uh, however good the um, tool can be, it's just a tool, so it can be enough alone. In fact, uh, you still have to decide what will be included in the dress release, and that can be done by a program. Um, to be able to do such a thing, you first of all need to estimate the effort for every task you have in your list, or in, in our case, in the DBA. This is probably the most difficult things to do, because um, if you ask a programmer, how long uh, will it take to do that? He will answer, oh, I don't know. I can tell you when I finished it. <laughs> and uh, you can work this way if you plan to give the effort estimation before doing the job. So um, you are usually have to just uh, have, uh, yeah, force the programmer to do something they didn't really like, and so the effort estimation can be something really difficult to have. There are some rare cases in where uh, different customers ask you to do the same thing, so you say, oh, lucky, they have to do the same thing they already did, so, wow, the effort estimation will be the same or less, but you're wrong because uh, a good programmer that is called to do the same things twice will not just copy and paste the code, but modify the previous code, make it more general, so you have to add more time to test the code already released. So your life will not be so easy. When you have the effort estimation, you have to decide how much time can be reasonable for testing, because you have to consider that a new release means testing new things, but also no regression tests. That are usually the most important part because you can give a customer something that previously worked, but now, no, sorry, we had the things and that crashed all the rest. No, that's not a good idea if you want them to remain with your customer. So once you have decided these things, you can proceed in two ways. The first one is uh, fix the release date uh, because uh, you know that there are particular needs like uh, in our cases, uh, usually we know that we have provided uh, adaptation for uh, new year and uh, calculation and such. So usually we release something near the end of the year, then uh, go on like that. Then uh, since you know how many time you ne will need for testing, fix the code freeze date, that this one you say, okay, that's we are going, well, this, this is what we are going to deliver, that we can start test. And at the end, you, knowing how many time you have left from today that you are deciding what you deliver to the delivery date, then you can fix the list of the task, knowing how many people you have, how heavy is every task, and then go for it. The second way is, is just the opposite. If you have a priority that you can't avoid to deliver, then you will fix the list of tasks, then fix the code freeze date, because knowing how long it will take, you can know when, more or less, you will have finished developing everything, and then, according to the code freeze date, fix the release date. 
The problem is that is not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Just theory. The actual truth is that uh, the company executives uh, decide the number of yearly releases because they want to be sure that the company seems to be active on the market. So you can just decide that, uh, okay, let's uh, stop making release from three years because your customer will forget about you in the meantime. And uh, so they, they say, okay, how many times we have to re have a release every year? Three times in our cases was the decision because summer is a period that programmers, I don't know why, but go, want to go on holidays. So, yeah, let's be small around. So, no release during the summer. And then they also decide the period of the year because, uh, as I stated before, your customer can have particular needs. So, what's left to do is decide what will uh, be part of the release and uh, what will not. The problem is that, uh, you know, to be sure, sales department will tell you, I want everything. Development department will tell, consider that our effort estimation was probably wrong. We will take more time. So at the end, uh, they usually make a bit of fight, uh, and uh, it uh, lasts... Uh, a couple of weeks, uh, in they have different meetings uh, because uh, every time uh, there is a s the real life that uh, stuck in and so they have to stop. And um, at the end, if uh, they are like that, uh, you probably have managed to have a good release because both are completely busted. So they probably set it up for something that is in the middle and so it can make sense because uh, yeah, if both are willful, then the fight uh, will end uh, with a good end. So, once uh, you have your basket filled and the date decided and everything, you just need to fix the real delivery date, not just an hypothetical one, at least four months in advance. Uh, I think means real delivery date because of what the executive give you are an idea, the period of the year, but you need to give a programmer a real date because, oh, just November, okay. Then it was the beginning and they thought about the end, not the same things. Inform everyone in the company about it because, uh, yeah, you are usually deciding the, new, the next release when they are working on the last one or managing bugs and such of the, next, just, uh, the release it just delivered. So they have their mind on completely other things uh, and so they can just not hear you. Sorry, 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 another time, another time. I have uh, other things to do now that are more urgent, like uh, customer complaining. Okay, great, go. Uh, then you have to fix also the real code freeze date uh, as soon as you fix the real delivery date because this is the real important one for organizing tests and all the other activities that in will involve the consultant. And inform everyone in the company about it too because if they are mistook the two dates, you will be fucked in any case. Inform everyone about what they are supposed to do for the next release. It seems trivial, but... Uh, Programmers can have uh, a different to-do list uh, on what uh, the sales uh, versus programmer department fight uh, decided because uh, they can receive uh, different information from uh, what the company thinks is more important. Regularly check the status of the task you have decided to deliver. Um, the fact that programmers uh, risk to give an estimation just when the job is finished uh, is not because they are just uh, simply pessimistic people. Probably they learn to be so by experience. Since uh, strange things, uh, strange bugs, strange behavior have the bad habit to start to pop up uh, everywhere when you just finish uh, de delivering, developing your things uh, and uh, then everything, nothing works anymore. So you have not finished at all. Remember, that there will be unplanned tasks popping up all the time. The customer even give a damn about what you have decided to do. They want to think. If they want something, they want something. So 
usually sales department think to, no, but we risk to lose the customer, so we can do that also. And so you will have your basket that is just full at the beginning and then become more. Remember that organization is just something you need in order to hope to notice problems when it's not too late. Okay, finished. <laughs> Okay. No, I was hmm? okay. Ah. For for some projects, have you considered using agile development so to speed up the um, and can sort of have a continual release schedule? Sorry. Uh, there's a there's a movement in software development where you're always, you're in continual development, kind of like... Ah, UPL but our area. software, I mean, we have, uh, we call project things that can uh, have an end. All the other things, we call them just improvements. And we are continuously improvement things because, uh, uh, you know, we deal with financial, and so when financial, new financial instruments come, uh, we have to adapt, we have to do things. We, uh, we call projects just uh, really small things, <laughs> so we can sh be sure that they have uh, more or less an end. All the other are just tasks, and you can have a list uh, quite long of tasks, and yeah. Who's your illustrator? Hmm? Uh, I took uh, the first images from uh, Simon's Cat, and that is uh, videos you can find uh, on YouTube. Uh, and when he exactly is dealing with this cat, that is uh, everything, but not organized and not. Uh, and all the other, I just uh, well, search them with uh, Google Peek, and that's all. <laughs> One of the problems that we encounter in software development with deadlines is the ego-ridden programmer, which means all, all programmers, <laughs> who uh, are working on what you, I think you called tasks of, oh, I would really like to get this new feature into this release. And so they'll work their butt off and cram it into the release, you know, 30 seconds before the cutoff date, and of course nothing works. Now, how, how, do, you, how do you manage this? Uh, okay. When... The, uh, if we try, uh, I hope that we can go this way, but since one of those is uh, this Carlo Alberto that founded the company, we can't. So we decided to deal with it in another way. So during when we are in the code freeze phase, we have uh, two different environments. One that is when you develop, and the other one that is uh, derived uh, the day of the code freeze uh, from the actual development and became what we are going to deliver. So programmers that want to do other things uh, that uh, will be good to have or notice that they can improve things, uh, can deliver, uh, develop them in the other environment. When they are sure that in the development environment they work fine and will not uh, endanger what we have in the actual testing environment, they can move just that piece of code and uh, they have it integrated. We have uh, part of the DBA is also the possible to have uh, this kind of check when you move things from one environment to another. So if uh, the code in the um, region, uh, the, the um, you move them from development to test. If in test the functions are still the same, you will have no word warning. If someone notice bug in the test environment and fix them there, you will have a warning, so you will know that you can easily move things there without endangering what is there. So this way we try. I admit it's just something. Sometimes it happens that we have that kind of problems, but. Uh, now we try to avoid them, uh, I, I added explicitly, check regularly how the project is going because uh, this way you will know in advance if you have to postpone the, ch the code freeze date. Yeah? 
So it's more or less the same, uh, it might be a similar thing. It's um, do you include um, internal geek requests um, of, I've just been to a conference in Scandinavia and I've now come back as a senior programmer and I'm convinced that we need to change every instance of the uppercase function to a lowercase u at the start. <laughs> does, does that go in as just a, a task on the shopping list of things that you'll consider? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have uh, 50 programmers, as we see before, 20, 51 ways to write code, and we don't have rules about that. There are... Uh, we sometimes... Uh, have uh, some uh, direction like uh, uh, since we sooner or later are going to move to Unicode, please uh, to check uh, if uh, a certain thing uh, is character or not, use this function. Uh, but the problem is that uh, most uh, of uh, the new programmers, they arrive uh, every now, once of two years, we have uh, five, six new programmers joining the group, uh, and we have a proper manual to give them. These are the function existing. These are the things that uh, is, uh, you are supposed to do. You learn uh, going around and ask, uh, so you can can be that you have different uh, ideas uh, depending on your, what you have to do. So some directions uh, come up, but are really few, like this one of about. Uh, Chark the uh, check or really, really things, small things. We have a cover function, so also we try to not use a quad function, but the proper cover function. If you know, it exists always like that. <laughs> if you know, okay. Yep. Hmm? I have a question about uh, your your database. Uh, yeah. Does it also include project planning? properly or does it just contain the different tasks you have to do? No, we, uh, since there are always small, um, a few numbers of people involved, uh, we don't need to provide a plan because uh, usually also big project, uh, can, uh, the biggest project I saw involved, uh, I think, uh, five programmers and uh, ten consultants. So. It's really a small number to need to have a real strict plan about things. What's more, as I discussed also with the Kai, we don't have, uh, and this is uh, a pity from, from my, my point of view, we don't have the test plan, we don't have uh, test cases. So make a plan so without uh, really writing there. Okay, from this to this test uh, is not so much <laughs> of help. Thank you. Okay. Um, you were saying with a very small company, uh, the two programmers get together around the coffee machine yeah. to discuss ideas. Is there an equivalent with 50 programmers? How do they discuss ideas? Can I say, does anyone have a function to do this? Do they email each other? Is there a group? Is there any communication between the... 50 programmers. But we are, uh, if the group is uh, so big, I think it's really difficult. Uh, we have uh, in, an internal forum to discuss uh, things uh, within the company, but usually is not uh, such a technical ones because uh, people prefer to go around and ask things directly to one person or two person, they have a small discussion. Because uh, the risk is that if you have uh, so many people involved, uh, then uh, the discussion will never end. So um, usually, yeah, in the forum, uh, in the internal forum, we discuss uh, more general things. Uh, but then, uh, when the discussion stops, uh, most group go around in their coffee lounge. Okay. Um. When you talk about all the tasks you've uh, kind of like tracked in your database, you also talked about all the estimates on the effort that you need to do. Yeah. But um, you talk also about the fight between the sales and development, which is kind of like, yeah. I, at least that's something I recognize. But, uh, 
do you do the same thing on the stuff when it comes in from the customers, right? They say, well, this could actually give us 100,000 euro if we implement this. So you have a priority that is one towards the customers and what is going to give you most street credit for delivering. And then on the right. other side, what will make our application better, meaning this is what development thinks is the best to do. Uh, do you, so having both a priority from or, or an estimate from a customer point of view and from a development point of view. Uh, the customer point of view is uh, usually managed by the sales department. Then when they fix a priority, they mean exactly or how you have to take care of the customer because it is becoming, um, oh, you are not considering me too much, so we have to give him something to him. Then there is the money part, but uh, I think that they try to balance uh, it uh, with uh, the image, the image of the company, I think, uh, in their part, but the, their part. The programmer just says, uh, no, the basket is too full, and uh, if you do that and that, uh, in the same, at the same time, uh, testing will be a mess. So the, the, the sales department has uh, internal meetings before starting fighting with the programmers uh, to decide their own list uh, and then define uh, the priority. And then uh, we go for the fight and uh, decide. But this is done before. The, the, all those reasoning is done before. And usually programmer and I think it's a quite a good thing, doesn't know how much money are involved in the project because if they know, they say, they think, all oh, this money, and why this is my paycheck? <laughs> so <laughs> better they are not now aware. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I want only to say, I, I, I like the loft, I think is. Uh, it's true what you said. Uh, I think that when uh, John asked to you how we tried to uh, to have something which is looks like the coffee machine discussion, uh, we do something which is I don't know how to to, to translate it. There is an internal uh, rite called baptism, ah. and you don't spoke about that, and you are the organizer of that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what Carl says is that uh, we have a phase between uh, analysis and bef before the analysis phase uh, that is uh, sometimes uh, not involves all the company. So it's not really what uh, John asked for, but uh, involve who, who wants to participate. Uh, this the, we call it bat baptism. And uh, when there are tasks uh, that... Uh, Programmer, the senior programmer doesn't know how, which is the best way to develop them. They assign this phase. That means uh, I'll need to have a meeting uh, about these things because I don't know which is the best way. So we usually, once a week, uh, uh, Stefano Lanzavecchia, that is our CTO, meets with uh, all the person that wants to participate. We use a video conference to also involve uh, the um, Trieste and the Pistoia um, offices, so everyone can have a say in that, and uh, open the discussion about those particular topics. Uh, and then uh, we decide uh, the best way at this point, the programmer that was asked to analyze the do the job have uh, his answer and then uh, provide the effort estimation. Sometimes, uh, it is the worst case, uh, it happens that the programmer is stuck uh, with how to go on with developing who after, so when he is in the development phase, uh, and so he can ask for have a baptism on that task again, but uh, Usually, um, you don't have, if you are already in the development phase, you can't wait uh, one week, also one day. So we, they usually go to Stefano, send an email uh, to all the people that can have a say on the things and organize a short meeting uh, on the topic to know how to go on. 
Then sometimes Carlos storms in and say, no, 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 all you did, all you did was uh, is a waste, so let's trash it and start again. And uh, so you think, I love him. <laughs> but that's all. <laughs> Elena? Yeah. Uh, you were speaking about development mostly. What about testing? How testing is organized? Because for financial products, uh, testing is not just bugs, uh, Hunting. It's a very serious thing because it result, could result in big financial loss. So, uh, testing. Um, every development team yeah. has their own uh, testing team, or you have a big testing team with, with shared by developer teams. Uh, and that, how you plan that? Because, okay, uh, developers could estimate time they are going to spend for development. What about testing? How do you estimate that? Uh, I think that uh, one of the biggest problems is that we don't make estimation about testing. Uh, what we usually do is that we have the um, chief, the boss of the consultant, that uh, check through the DBA all the element in the list that doesn't have tester and uh, looking at the topic or the kind of things that are supposed to do, assign tester to every project. Uh, if uh, the project is uh, really bigger than, uh, you can have uh, a, quite a huge number of uh, consultants involved. But um, I think that uh, one of uh, the still open point, one of one open point we have uh, is uh, to manage a test uh, in a proper way because at the moment when the development team finish, uh, the consultant give a first uh, try to the things. Then when we start uh, the code freeze phase, all the software is to be checked, not just the few new things you did. And then all the company is involved in that. All the, co the consultants are called to use uh, the test environment uh, also to give uh, support to the customer calling. So they will be able to replicate whatever the customer is doing, see if uh, no new problems, new things uh, that wasn't expected pop up, uh, and then refer them to the programmers and so but we are not so good in the test phase yet, sorry. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs>